So do you have any problems debugging your code? That is, your syntax is fine, but your code isn't producing the results you expect. That's what I want to talk about, as well as an easier way to find those errors and how to fix them. And what we're going to do is use something called debug mode and breakpoints in order to show you how to do that. So here I have a really simple application. I just want to run this real quick. It's called no fours. I'm not expecting there to be any numbers that have the number four, nor is it divisible by four. So if I go and run this, you'll see I have some numbers are appearing twice. Some numbers are appearing not at all. Some numbers showing up that should not be showing up. Like, obviously, I shouldn't have any numbers in the 40s. None of those should show up. But I have 41, 42, 43, but 44 isn't. It's only if the number is both divisible by 4 and has the number 4 in it that it doesn't show. On the other hand, numbers like 39 show up twice. Now, this is actually a pretty easy error. You could probably spot this on your own. But I just want to show you what we often would go through for something like this. So I'm going to clear my screen real quick. And normally, this is how I see a lot of programmers do it. They'll say it's like, print, I'm in no force. Okay. And we're like, I'm pretty sure we're going to get here because obviously we're printing out numbers. And I get here like, oh, okay, I'm going to scroll up, scroll up. Oh, yep, I'm in no force. Okay. Whoo, that was good. And so they're like, okay, let's get out of that. And then I'll be like, okay, I'm going to say print. I'm in no fours loop. Loop value is I in div by four is. And they'll do div by four. And so they're, they're starting to print a whole bunch of information here. It's like, oh, wow, look at all this. Like, you know, I can see numbers and it's getting crazy. Ah. And this makes it hard to try to figure out, okay, why is it getting here? Why is it not working? Like, I can see where I'm getting, but I don't understand why. And, and this takes a while to kind of go through. This is a real, real mess. Let me show you an alternative. I'm just going to get rid of these print statements. Now, the reason why we sometimes use print statements is back in the old days, before IDEs, integrated development environments, we would often have to write code in a text editor and then compile it and then run it. And that's the three separate steps. And we had no idea what was going on inside of our code. So we had to put those print statements in. But ever since IDEs came out, we've started having these things called breakpoints. And a breakpoint just allows me to come over here, often to my left-hand side, and just click on it. And that's how hard it is to set a breakpoint. Notice it's just a little red dot, it looks like it. You might have done this on accident, didn't realize what it was for. And if I just run it, there's nothing that happens. But I'm going to come over here to my run command and choose Python debugger, debug the Python file. Now when I run this, you notice that what happens is it stops and nothing happens down in my console window. Instead, I look at my code window and now I have a line of code that's highlighted. And this highlight says, hey, I am here in my code and I have paused. If I look to my left-hand side, I've got a variable window. So instead of where I used to have my files and stuff like that, it says, hey, here's all my local variables that are set and their current value. And I can come in here and say step into. And you notice that I moved down one line of code. And now I has been set by that for statement. I'm on the line of code that says div by four equals I modulus four. I haven't set it yet. So it's not showing up in my local variables yet. I click down to step into one more time. And I now see this. I can now see I'm starting at 12, so div by 4 is equal to 0, and I should only print if it's not equal to 0, so I step into it. Notice I skip over that print statement if so my condition was false, but now I have a new condition, and that is take the number, convert to a string, see if there's a 4 inside of it. If there's not a 4, we're going to print it, and that's what happens, but I shouldn't be printing if 
both of those or either one of those is true. I should only print if it's false. And so I shouldn't print 12, but I do. If I come through and step through again, I gets updated. We notice the 13. Div by 4 gets updated to 1. I have the print. If div by 4 is not equal to 0, I should print. It goes in and prints. I have another condition if there's no 4 inside of it. And that's why I'm getting a double 13. So I start to kind of see what's going on here. And I can do this, or I can come over here and say step out. And this goes all the way back and runs through the whole loop and then comes back to my breakpoint. So because I put my breakpoint on a loop, it's going to run through a whole body of the loop and then stop. I can put multiple breakpoints if I want. So I can have one on line 9 and maybe over here on line 13 if I want. And if I say step out, it goes in and it pauses at my next one. And I can kind of see like a little snapshot. Ooh, this is what's happening. So I can put as many breakpoints as I want. If I say step over, notice I still go one line at a time, very similar to my step into. Or I can say continue, and my continue as well as my step out will go to the next breakpoint. I could also remove breakpoints as I'm working through this. I could also restart it and go all the way back and run it the very first time. Now, that's helpful because I'm going to come over here and say, you know what? What I really need is an and statement in between these two if statements. So I only want to have one print and an and. So if this statement and this statement are both true, now we're going to print. If I step into, you notice it's smart enough to look at this. Now, it's kind of a weird thing because it didn't update it. That's why we have this restart. So I'm going to come over here, restart. I'm just going to step out. There's 15, 17, 18, 19. Notice that 12, 14, and 16, none of those printed, which is exactly what I'd expect. Okay? Because they were either divisible by 12 or they had a 4 in it. So this gave me a way to very quickly modify my code, test it. And then if I just want to keep on running, I can remove this breakpoint, say step out, and boom, it runs. You notice like, well, why did it go back to no fours and why did it go to main? Well, that was real simple. It was saying, hey, we're done with this. I'm showing you where I came from. And then I came from the if statement to call main. And so it popped out like that. So that's what it was doing. And it shows you when you go into a function call, or when you leave, all that type of stuff. It's really, really helpful as far as how that goes. So debugging becomes very, very powerful for us. And we can do it in a lot of applications. Not all, however. Sometimes if we're running something as a service, it's run behind the scenes and there's no interface at all for us to see. And that becomes a little bit more challenging. So we might have to look at something like logging. And we'll talk about that in a little bit in an upcoming video. Hopefully you like this video. If so, please give it a like. Just helps out the algorithm, helps other people find this video and can help them out as well. Also, if you would, stick around. There's some other videos coming up. We're going to have one on logging as well as other techniques for learning how to program and getting better at that. So stick around for those videos coming up.